The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus came down with the twelve and stood on a stretch of level ground with a great crowd of his disciples and a large number of people from all Judea and Jerusalem and the coastal region of Tyre and Sidon. And raising his eyes towards his disciples, he said, Blessed are you who are poor, for the kingdom of God is yours. Blessed are you who are now hungry, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who are now weeping, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude you and insult you, and denounce your name as evil on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice and leap for joy on that day. Behold, your reward will be great in heaven. For their ancestors treated the prophets in the same way. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are filled now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you will grieve and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for their ancestors treated the false prophets in this way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So, What is your deepest desire? If there could be one thing different in your life that could make you truly happy and content, what would it be? A new car, a new house, a boat, a new job with more prestige and a bigger paycheck? How about a great vacation, a cure for cancer, or world peace? What would be your deepest desire? What are you hungry for? Well, the good news is our readings today are all about what will make us truly happy. The bad news? It's probably not what you think. The readings point out that most of our desires for happiness are misplaced. Though they may offer a moment of joy or pleasure, ultimately, they leave us unsatisfied. As we hear in the reading from Jeremiah, the psalm, and the gospel, scripture associates happiness or blessedness with something called beatitudes, an ancient biblical formula for encouraging people to do good. For instance, the psalm begins, blessed the man who follows not the counsel of the wicked, nor walks in the way of sinners. In Jeremiah we heard, Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord. He is like a tree planted beside water and sends roots to the stream. And that tree stays green and bears fruit even in a drought. The Beatitudes are numerous and beautiful in the Old Testament. And they all say, if you do a particular thing, you will receive blessing. Beatitudes are consolations helping the hearers to do good and to be good persons. But Jesus seems to have reversed that idea as we hear in Luke's account of the Beatitudes. Luke's version is more challenging than the ones we usually hear from Matthew. Luke's blesseds 
are immediately followed by complimentary woes. And, well, they really aren't that complimentary. Do these pairs of blessings and curses require that we be poor, hungry, weeping, hated, excluded, insulted, and denounced in order to receive salvation? Are these really beatitudes? Consider, blessed are you that are hungry. And consider how we, in our culture, respond to hunger. We chase our desires and we cram ourselves full. We fill our bellies, our wallets, our calendars. We inflate our pride and ego with power and prestige. We overindulge on pleasure and vanity, be it from the flattest abs or shiny teeth or fast cars. And then being crammed full, we may believe, for a moment at least, that we are happy, even blessed. But Jesus says true blessings, true happiness comes only if we stay closer to empty, if we leave more space for God. In today's second reading, Paul teaches us that life without the Lord is ultimately a futile life. But life with the Lord is a life redeemed and transformed by the resurrection into a life of hope. As Paul says, if Christ has not been raised, our faith is in vain. Our human attempts to pursue happiness are wastes of time. It is our faith and our hope that can satisfy all our hungers through good times and bad. If in that hope, we stay close to God and leave room for blessings, we can weather the storms and trials of life. Like the well-placed tree in today's first reading that stays green during heat waves and fruitful during droughts, there is no cause for fear or distress because it draws on a deeper source that is undiminished by adverse conditions. When we draw from the hope of our Lord, hope in the promises that he makes in the Beatitudes, we draw from something undiminished by poverty, undiminished by hunger, undiminished by sour, sour, sorrow or persecution. God knows that there are bad seasons and good ones in life, but a good harvest will ultimately come if we trust God. In the Lord. And Luke's Beatitudes follow with a warning of woe for those who would put their trust in other things, as did the barren bush. Those who trust in riches, a full belly, a perpetual good time, and the flattery of others, separated from God, will find just how fleeting and ultimately unsatisfying those things truly are in comparison to what our Lord offers a resilient life that thrives and blossoms in eternity. So to be truly happy, to satisfy all our hungers and our deepest desires, we need to take a lesson from the tree. We need to stretch out our roots to the source. Because if we stop making an effort to go deeper in our relationship with God, our spiritual life can become routine and superficial our own personal drought. But that enormous source of living water described by Jeremiah is the mystery of God, our source of faith and hope. It never goes dry or gets stagnant. God wants us to go deeper in our relationship with him beyond mere superficiality and sentimentality, deeper than an empty stomach, a diminishing bank account, or deeper than our sorrow. So what is your deepest desire? What will make you truly happy? Perhaps it's just enough poverty, hunger, and sorrow, insult, and exclusion to remind us to leave room for God and to put our trust in the promises he makes in the Beatitudes and in the hope generated by the resurrection. Stay close to the water of life and stretch your roots into the only source that can satisfy, 
the source of true and lasting happiness. For blessed are you who trust and hope in the Lord.